Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Green Nurse Podcast. We have a special guest, as you can see. But before we get started with talking to Dr. Lee Chapman, I'm going to do a little bit of an intro. So June 14th, the Government of Canada hosted a nursing retention forum led by Canada's Chief Nursing Officer, Dr. Lee Chapman, bringing together the nursing community, employers and frontline workers from across the country to discuss the current health workforce crisis, including strategies to address and improve nursing retention. The forum's participants met earlier that day and co-developed a toolkit with evidence-informed practical strategies such as mental health and wellness supports that employers and health authorities can implement to support nursing retention within their organizations. The forum provided a very unique uh, opportunity for experts, decision makers, and uh, key members of the nursing community to come together in support of the nursing workforce and discuss targeted strategies aimed at optimizing the work environment. And this toolkit is set to be released this fall. So bef- without further ado, I'm going to actually get Sarah to introduce our guest. So I would like to tell you a little bit more about uh, Dr. Lee Chapman. She is such a rock star. She was announced as the new Chief Nursing Officer of Canada on August 23rd, 2022. So just almost a year ago. In this role, she will provide strategic advice from a nursing perspective to Health Canada on priority policy and program areas, including health work service planning and stability, long-term care, home care, palliative care, mental health, alcohol and drug use, models of care, scopes of practice and competencies. She will play a convening role with provincial and territorial governments, along with federal health populations. The broad range of nursing stakeholders, regulatory bodies and colleges, and educators on key nursing issues and will represent the Government of Canada at public forums, both within and outside Canada. Dr. Chapman's nursing career has spent almost 20 years, and in that time, she has gained a deep understanding of nursing through a variety of clinical leadership positions in home and community care, research academic, regulatory, and professional practice environments. Her background in direct service provision includes critical care, community care, as well as education in professional associations. Wow, that was a mouthful. (laughs) So before we dive into the nursing retention questions, I think it's a good idea to get a better sense of who you are. Could you tell us a little bit more about your background? Sure. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you to the Gritty Nurses for having me on this podcast. Um, So it is actually 20 years this year that I've been a nurse. I graduated in 2003 uh, during the SARS uh, pandemic or SARS epidemic in uh, in Ontario. That was very, I mean, it was worldwide, but it was, uh, I think, we had a lot of negative outcomes in Ontario. Um, so I have worked, I've been a nurse for 20 years. I worked initially in critical care and uh, then eventually started, you know, I did my master's and started to um, work in regulation and professional practice and sort of other areas. But I then returned to clinical practice uh, initially as a camp nurse um, in a volunteer capacity. And then I started working in harm reduction. And I still work in harm reduction at Regent Park Community Health Center um, in the supervised injection site there. And uh, I'm delighted to be representing Canada at this level um, as the federal chief nursing officer. So, and I'm also a mom. (laughs) You wear a lot of different hats. 100%. And I I think this is, it's so timely to have this conversation when we were talking about nursing retention. And I I, I couldn't think of a better person to fill this role. So thank you so much for actually being in this role for us. And, you know, one of the things we've had conversations before where where you've said that you're an unlikely candidate for this role, but clearly you're a strong advocate. Um, How have you been finding this role and how have nurses been responding to you? And, you know, maybe what are some of your priorities right now? Okay, that's a a couple of questions uh, there, but it's good. I like it. It's it's good. Uh, I think I said I was an unlikely candidate for the role because of my advocacy background, because I'm in a public servant bureaucratic position. And um, I think that, you know, part of being an advocate is having a strong voice, setting an agenda and being very clear and deliberate about what your intentions are. And so in that sense, I think I'm a good candidate uh, for the role, but unlikely 
perhaps because of my harm reduction right. advocacy and activism. Um, but I have worked very closely with, you know, all levels of government. I've never been within government. So it's a different, uh, different ball game being within government, uh, but, you know, steep learning curve and, and uh, wonderful experience. Um, in terms of my priorities, I think, was the other question. I've been really focused, because the chief nursing officer role was vacant for over a decade in Canada, I've been really focusing on engagement across all provinces and territories to better understand the everyday realities of nurses in their respective environments. I'm a nurse from Ontario, and I need to understand what nursing is like from coast to coast to coast. So I've completed... Um, all my engagements in every province. I am visiting all three territories uh, over the next few months, and I'm really delighted to, to learn more about sort of the northern nursing experience as well as sort of rural and remote experiences. And uh, yeah, that's been, it's been very busy <laughs> since I started, uh, but, but what a joy and wonderful experience to be able to meet with nurses and to understand what their everyday reality is to reflect their, dis their uh, you know, everyday reality in policy and in decision making. Yeah, I think it's just so important for nurses to see you in this type of role, right? And to see that, you know, folks that call themselves advocates, that they they can be in these roles and we can actually make a difference. So super excited that you're going to be doing this work. Mm -hmm. And I think it's no secret that there are a lot of nurses that are looking to leave the profession. I don't think we could have this podcast without addressing that. Um, I did pull some stats that show not including nurses that are already planning to retire or close to retirement, but up to 43% of nurses currently are thinking about leaving the profession, leaving the workforce. Um, that's obviously something that we're not proud of, but I think the biggest challenge is really understanding what nurses are going through. And part of what we experienced at the Nursing Retention Forum was really addressing some of these barriers and key challenges. Um, do you have some initial takeaways that um, were uncovered at this forum? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think the Nursing Retention Forum was a key thing that I've been prioritizing since really from day one. There's been calls to hold a forum, uh, lots of work being done at the, uh, you know, at the provincial and territorial level on recruitment. But of course, we know we need to also look at retention and how to optimize the work environment so that we're not just yeah, um, you know, recruiting. We need we need folks to come into the profession, but we also need those in the profession to stay. And we, as you said, Sarah, uh, we need those who have left to return, uh, and you know, encourage those who have left the profession to return, or those who may have left the public sector. So the retention forum was by nurses for nurses, and I think there was immense power in that. Um, it was focused around the, the development of the toolkit, and you know, the toolkit is still under development, but we got very far on the day of the nurse nursing retention uh, forum in terms of, uh, you know, further developing the toolkit and refining some of the ideas. Um, but, you know, probably no surprise in, in a lot of the themes that we were focused on, reduced administrative burden for nurses, flexible staffing and scheduling, mental health and wellness supports. I think what was um, perhaps a bit different uh, was the intentionality and focus at the organizational and structural level. So we weren't saying what the individual nurse should do right. to improve their their work environment, we were saying that these are things that the organizations and the sort of structural level, uh, organizational structural level, uh, the, where things need to change to really uh, optimize the work environment and retain nurses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, when I when I think about, you know, how that day kind of unfolded, I think there were a lot of really interesting pieces and a lot of really key pieces that I was really enamored by the fact that you were able to bring nursing students in. And I think this is where actually a lot of our colleagues, even just, you know, that we hear from a lot of nursing students because they feel so kind of like things that are, are really bleak, things are really hard. And it was so important to involve their voices. And I think that, you know, there was so much that we took back and took away from that part of the conversation with having nurses students because again I always say I'm like you know what we're here yeah we're mid-career nurses but they're the future right and we have to make sure that their voices are included so it was hugely important to to have them there and I, I I also felt that it gave me hope to hear them speak right so what are some of the things that you might be hopeful for what are some of the those you know the the light at the end of the tunnel so to speak what are some of the things that you see that there that there is uh, still hope that we can uh, I guess seek out 
I, I mean, I'm glad that the day was hopeful because that was the intention that it was, it, you know, we're coming together because things are bleak, as you say, uh, within the nursing profession, but recognizing that this is just a moment in our professional lives, it will get better. We're working very hard to make things better for nurses throughout Canada. And but mindful that we're also, you know, operating within the context of a global nursing shortage. Right. So we need to actually do things differently. And that's why I think involving students with friends ideas is so key um, because also nursing retention starts in nursing education programs we know that sometimes because the clinical learning environment is so strained that students are leaving uh, before they've even completing uh, p- completed a nursing education program so we need you know nursing retention starts in nursing education programs but I'm very hopeful for the future of our profession I think you know this is very it's very challenging right now uh, but I think you know there's recognition that big change as possible. We saw record investment in healthcare in February with the Canada health transfers of almost $200 billion. And I think there's, you know, a real desire to look at how we can improve our um, healthcare system in Canada. It's something we take great pride in. And my hope would be that nurses are a profession of choice in supporting our publicly funded system in Canada because nurses can, they, nurses do so much and they can do so much in, um, in, you know, all sectors and all aspects of care. Uh, but we, we, just need to dream big and and also create the structures uh, to make it so. That's really inspiring. I love how you said that the forum was for nurses by nurses because so many times I think nurses haven't been able to have a seat at the table for decisions that really affect um, their working conditions. And I like what you really said about not thinking of what nurses individually need to do, but more of an organizational level. And I'm just wondering with the toolkit, in terms of the long-term vision of it, do you think part of it is holding organizations and governments accountable to um, help with the retention problem? I think the, um, I mean, at the provincial, we, you know, as you know, we have a federated model in Canada, so uh, provincial and territorial governments are responsible for developing the health care, uh, organizing the health care in their respective jurisdictions. I think what the toolkit does or will do is that it will provide evidence-based strategies um, with, you know, tangible, uh, implementable solutions by employers where they'll see the return on investment, they'll see the economic benefit. So, you know, if, if we don't uh, focus on nursing retention, then we spend a lot of money on agency or travel nursing, right. or we spend a lot of money recruiting, and that it, it's very expensive. So, you know, I hope that that financial argument will be very clear that retention does cost money, um, but in the end, it will save you money as an at the organizational level if you're able to actually create that optimal work environment to keep nurses uh, and to keep nurses and to return the, you know, find the joy in the nursing profession, find the joy in the work that nurses do every day. Um, we're f- probably far away from that, but I think it's possible. And, and I think it's possible with the toolkit. It's, it's so good to hear that because I think that I know a lot of nurses are struggling. And I think that, you know, we just don't have that opportunity where we see that there's work do- being done. And I think that, you know, a lot of nurses who reach out to us, they'll be like, you know, what, what, are, what is this person doing? What is the, this individual doing? And I think this also speaks to the fact that we also need to be a part of the solution, right? I think in nursing as a profession, we uh, like to complain. Um, we like to say all the things that are going wrong. But again, it's so important to be a part of the solution. And I think that I want, I want people to understand that, you know, although you may not see the work, the work is happening. And then if you don't see the work and you don't understand that the work is going on that you should be a part of the work right I think there's so much that we can offer and we actually had this conversation with Natalie uh, Stake Doucette today where we talked about if we don't step into those places of power someone else will step into the spots for us right someone else will run the narrative someone else will uh, take a hold of that story and we need to be the ones that actually are you know uh, mobilizing that change and I feel like we're in a good place that we can do that although things have been challenging and not glossing over the fact that you know we've heard the story of moral distress we've heard the stories of mental health it still is such a huge issue um but the fact that there is hope and i think that's such an important piece to continue to pull out and i i totally forgot what my next question is so i'm going to pass it to <laughs> okay, you okay that's okay so i know you're doing so many great things and you have so many great ideas i'm just wondering what else are you hopeful about what are you excited about in um the months to come 
Oh, well, I'm excited for the toolkit. Um, I'm excited to talk to both of you. I, I think the the key thing, I, you know, I've been focusing on engagement across all provinces and territories. And, the, you know, the biggest part of my job is listening and hearing what nurses everyday reality is. So I think... Um, you know, that has helped me to establish connections and a network across the country. And I'm excited to visit the territories. I'm excited uh, to actually see the toolkit, the re nursing retention toolkit come to fruition. And then also, you know, help, you know, disseminate it through this network uh, across the country and with all of the participants from the nursing retention forum from every jurisdiction in Canada. Uh, you know, I'm also hopeful that nurses are part of the change that is possible possible and in fact necessary in our healthcare system. And I think that reinstating the chief nursing officer role is a key step. Um, nurses know what is needed. And I, I think, uh, you know, I'm one nurse in Canada amongst almost half a million nurses, 440,000 ish nurses in Canada. Um, and so that's why you know, connecting with nurses across the country is so key to be informing some of the, these policy decisions. So I am hopeful that things will get better. Um, you know, I know it, it is uh, it is kind of a dark time in the profession, but I do trust that things will get better. There's a lot of effort and a lot of focus um, on improving our healthcare systems in Canada. And uh, I think that you know, amplifying the voices of nurses, ensuring their their voice and their perspective is reflected in decisions is key. Uh, I mean, I know, you know, one key thing that nurses want and are hopeful for is better labor mobility and being able to, you know, move across jurisdictions just the way that patients do and the way that care is virtually uh, occurring across jurisdictional borders. We need to uh, look at some of those, uh, you know, some of those schemes that are keeping nurses uh, from practicing across the jurisdictional borders. Um, so I'm hopeful for that as well. So lots of hope. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think all the work that you are doing and will continue to do is just so great and you are so inspiring. I think you were an unlikely but the best candidate to be the chief nursing officer and we are so glad to have had you on the podcast today. And, and before we go, we always like to ask this question, is there anything that we missed? Okay. Oh, oh no. Oh, 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 oh. What's happening? I have a question for the gritty nurses. I want to know what gives you hope in the nursing profession, uh, because you're also uh, listening to a lot of the the bleakness, a lot of the dark yeah. stories, right, about moral distress and mental mental illness. And, uh, you know, maybe I feel like often we jump to re talking about resilience without actually looking at vulnerability in the profession and, and also the trauma that was endured over COVID. So, you know, how do you repackage that into, into hope, into a hopeful, uh, hopeful uh, future? That's <laughs> oh, that's a good question. I, I think just, um, even connecting with nurses face to face at this forum, um, at this conference has been really inspiring to know that even though nurses are facing a really challenging time, they still find the time to listen to our episodes. Mm -hmm. You know, like there's still there's still something in them that wants to learn, that wants to make things better, that wants to spread the word about, you know, things that nurses are going through, but also um, accomplishments that we've had. So people give me hope that they're, uh, they're excited about graduating nursing, that they're excited about trying new types of nursing, that they look to people like Amy and I and yourself that are doing things a little bit outside of the box. And that really gives me hope that nurses um, still look up to one of their own. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I think back to almost the reason why we started the podcast, right? Um, really thinking about all of the different connections that we've made or even even in those the hardest and most darkest times that we've had that it has actually been always a nurse that has kind of come back to us and said hey you know i i've been there too i've struggled it's been hard and um we are a community and the fact that even when things were hard that community still was there for us even though sometimes that community was the ones that were hindering us as well but I, it always circles back to me that the fact that you know we hear these stories we know that we're connecting with other folks we know that we are i know it sounds corny but we are 
they're changing our lives and we're changing their lives too. I feel that, you know, if we can make a small amount of change, whether it's through a story that we tell or sharing an experience, that's what continues to give me hope. And I, and I, I am hopeful. I, we, we get that question all the time. Like, oh, would, if, would you go into nursing now if it was three years ago or whatever the case may be? And I think the answer still is yes, mm-hmm. because I feel that this is a great profession. Um, we need some work. We're going to get the work done. And that's why we're here. We're here to have really, really courageous conversation. So thank you for that question. And thank you, uh, Dr. Chapman, for coming on the Gritty Nurse podcast. We have a new Gritty Nurse inductee. Um, And um, yeah, thank you for sharing all this information about the nursing forum and uh, things for nurses, Canadian nurses to look forward to. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Gritty Nurse podcast. Check us out on grittynurse.com. We are speakers, thought leaders, upcoming authors. Book us at your next event. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and all other major podcast platforms. Don't forget to subscribe, listen, and leave us a review. So thanks again for listening and stay stay gritty. gritty.